And joining us for reaction to the Democrats' attempt to expand the Supreme Court is Republican Congressman from Missouri, Blaine Lutmeyer. Thank you so much for joining us, Congressman. We appreciate it. Thank you. Good to be with you guys today. Let's just begin with your reaction uh, to what's transpired today and the latest moves by the Democrats. Well, I think uh, Mr. Stubbe, who was on prior to me, made the point that it's all politics. It's not going to go anywhere. Uh, to me, this is more political theater. Uh, quite frankly, I think what's going on here is that they're trying to put pressure on uh, Justice Breyer to retire. I think that they're trying to put, just, you know, put pressure on the rest of the uh, justices. I think if you look back in history and look at what uh, transpired during the uh, Franklin Roosevelt administration when he tried to pack the court, uh, by his raising this issue and pushing it forward, he wound up uh, probably influencing some of their decisions shortly thereafter because suddenly some of the decisions that uh, they, people anticipated happening didn't happen. So I, I think that's probably what's going on here, some intimidation with regards to uh, the existing court, uh, perhaps some pressure to put on Mr. Breyer to uh, retire. Uh, they're, they're laying the groundwork to maybe push this at some point down the road, but I, I think this is more political theory right now than it is uh, actually getting uh, a bill across the finish line. Interesting, <laughs> because the original uh, FDR efforts to so-called pack the court, I think it died in committee at some point because it didn't have broad uh, support for him. And as you said, just talking about it may have accomplished some political goals. Um, are there votes in this Congress where Democrats could actually get this through the House. I'll leave the Senate out of it for a moment, but through the House. Well, I'm not, I'm not the, the, the vote counter on the Democratic side. I don't think you'd find anybody on the Republican side to support this. Right. Uh, as you know, with the seating of uh, Congressman Letlow from uh, Louisiana yesterday, uh, the Speaker can only lose two votes at this point, and uh, it's not going to fly. So. I think maybe that's one of the reasons she's reluctant to try and bring forward this uh, this, this bill should it come to the House. But uh, you know, there's some other elections to be held within the next several months, so that number will change. But right now, today, uh, I it, I think it's pretty doubtful whether they can actually pass that or not because of the narrow margin that uh, exists today. Yeah. What what about using it as a catalyst to do away with the filibuster? <laughs> well, I think that's a possibility. I. Um, I, I really think that this is not the kind of issue you want to probably use to, uh, to to press the filibuster on. I think you want to do something like that with regards to a spending measure, a transportation measure, uh, some other issue. This this is a pretty divisive issue. This doesn't have the kind of support nationally that you want to try and get the filibuster rule changed on, I wouldn't think. I would think you want to find a, a, an issue that is so overwhelming that the public itself supports the issue and therefore when you go do away with the filibuster it's something that you could sell to the general public in a different way this is an issue if you look at the polling on it does not poll well yeah. and i uh, i think it'd be a bit huge mistake for the uh, the democrats to go down this road and use this as the issue to ride the, uh, a change for the filibuster rule I, I understand you're not a democrat so when we ask you questions about what's going on with the democrats we just said the fact that you're in washington and understand the lay of the ground better than we do so when i see nancy pelosi uh, saying we're going to wait and see what the committee decides, but you got Jerry Nadler out there trying to to go forward with this, and then the Biden administration kind of saying, uh, "Well, we're waiting to see what." Ha what does that tell you about the Democratic Party right now? Well, it tells me that they're trying to sell it to their members. They haven't got it sold yet. It's Speaker Pelosi would out there be waving, waving that bill in her hand, and saying, "Hey, this is the bill we're going to file tomorrow if they can get it through the Senate." She's not doing that, and I. I would assume from that that she doesn't have the votes because she's not afraid to tell you she does. And when she doesn't say that, that's a good sign she does not have the votes. So at this point, uh, she's still either working behind the scenes or this is an issue that she doesn't uh, feel again that it's something that's, that she's going to have to work on. And as I said before, it's probably more of, a, of an issue to try and intimidate the justices themselves mm. and or yeah. pressure uh, uh, Justice Breyer to retire. Yeah. Uh, let's just shift gears. We have about 30 seconds left uh, to this letter that you sent the United States Secretary of the Treasury, uh, Janet Yellen, and the Administrator of the Small Business Administration, uh, urging them to reopen the economy. And people at home can read in part what you wrote. Why did you think that this was important to do, and what do you hope to accomplish? Well, I think it's important to accomplish uh, us being on record with regards to uh, continuing to be uh, provide the oversight over. 
uh, lower taxes, uh, less regulation, uh, less government intrusion into the lives of small businesses. Small businesses drive our economy. I'm the ranking member on small businesses. It's my job to make sure we protect them and continue to empower them to continue to, to provide the jobs and drive our economy. I believe by some of the executive actions, the executive orders that President Biden has put in place to take the, the precedence over executive orders that President Trump put in place is a really, really bad idea from the standpoint of taking executive order off the books that uh, said for every two rules that you put on, you take one off, and also to not enforce guidance. This is a huge issue for small businesses especially. All right. Well, Congressman Luke Meyer, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Good to be with you today.